Chase Briscoe spent all of the Coca-Cola 600 running 20th to 30th and just got hit with maybe the biggest penalty in NASCAR history for an illegal part. What is happening? If you are going to cheat slash blatantly use a bad part or blatantly break the next gen rules when you've seen how harsh NASCAR has been on teams for breaking the next gen rules, 20th to 30, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I cannot, I, I can't believe this. An L3 penalty has been handed out, an L3 penalty. We've seen L1s, that's about in the 35 to 60 range of points. Uh, and then, you know, about, I think, $50,000 in fines. We've seen some L2 penalties, which results in 100 points around, 75 to 100 points, and then around $100,000 in fines. Let me read off the punishment for this one, for an L3 penalty. 120, 120 driver and owner points, 25 playoff points, a six-week suspension to crew chief John Klossmeyer, and a fine of $250,000 for a counterfeit underwing part. Oh my gosh. They didn't get bombed with a penalty here. They got nuked. Nuked. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Financially, I don't think it's actually the biggest penalty of all time. Because, you know, Hendrick got like four to eight and four hundred thousand dollars. I think Michael Walsh Racing, when they had like the jet fuel or whatever, <laughs> they had a big penalty and then also the, the spin gate. But in terms of like the whole thing, you know, the points, the suspension, the fines, all that added together, this has got to be the biggest penalty in NASCAR history. I mean, holy crap. Um, let's read the NASCAR statement. They tell you everything in it to make sure like if we're going to hand out a penalty this big essentially take someone out of the playoff picture we're going to tell you why briscoe was minus four after the 600 he was only four points out of the playoffs the first guy below the cutoff line four points behind he's now 124 points behind 31st in points that is how bad this penalty hit them NASCAR issued an L3 level penalty, the most severe punishment under the sanctioning body's deterrent system to Stuart Haas Racing after the discovery of a counterfeit part in the team's number 14 Ford. As a result, the number 14 has been docked to 120 points in both the owner standings and driver standings for Chase Briscoe. An additional loss of 25 playoff points should Briscoe and the team qualify for the postseason and a $250,000 fine and suspension in the next six points race to crew chief John Klossmeyer. Oh my God, <laughs> so much. According to the penalty grid issued by NASCAR, the team violated multiple sections of the NASCAR rulebook. That includes section 14.1F, because I know exactly what where that is in the rulebook, because, you know, I have that in my, in my room here, which prohibits counterfeiting a next-gen single-source vendor-supplied part, along with sections 14.6.A, underwing, and 14.6.3B, engine panel assembly. The engine panel assembly rule specifically notes that the engine panel NACA NACA duct must be used and must remain unobstructed. NACA ducts, I don't know if you're actually supposed to say it or like spell it out, but I'm going to say NACA because it's easier. Our single source single source supplied parts for the next gen car and may be modified or counterfeited. The NASCAR rulebook spells out the location for these ducts on the left and right side windows, which are used to help cool the car. Tightening the ducts or counterfeiting slash modifying the size of the ducts can help a team create more downforce on the race car. In the post-race inspection at the R&D Center, we found the number 14 had an engine panel NACA duct not in compliance with the rulebook, NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition Elton Sawyer told NASCAR.com. It is a counterfeit part, and that is an L3 penalty. We need to make sure we're keeping the teams and the car in compliance. The deterrence model has to fit that, and that's our responsibility as custodians of the sport and of the garage. Don't mess with a single source part. Working in areas we used to in the next in the Gen 6 car is just not going to be acceptable with this car as we move forward. It's not going to be the culture we're going to allow. 
Um, and then it goes on to kind of just explain like what the penalties can be. But uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, SHR, the 14 car just got murdered. Oh my goodness. Uh, as I said, we've seen next-gen penalties before. Harvick got an L2 last year in the fall at Talladega. Um, Hendrick got hit with an L2, but then they won the appeal. So they really didn't get an L2. Um, Colley got an L2 earlier this year. Uh, McDowell, the 34 front rows got an L2. Keselowski and RFK have gotten an L2. Lots of L2s have been handed out. Majority of them two Ford, but oh my gosh, I am still trying to process. They're the first team to get hit with an L3 penalty and they ran 20th. If you're going to blatantly do something like this, and it said somewhere in there, I think it helps the downforce or something. If you're going to do something like this, at least like run top five, right? Am I crazy? I mean, like, what are they doing? You can't, well, what are you doing? And then, all right, oh, it gets better. SHR's Greg Zipidelli on the penalty to Briscoe. We had a quality control lapse and a part that never should have been on a car going to the racetrack ended up on the number 14 car at Charlotte. We accept NASCAR's decision will not appeal. Oh my gosh. How, how does this happen? I'm genuinely curious. How does that happen? I don't know if that's just like a PR excuse and they're just throwing something out there. They know they're going to lose any type of appeal, but how? How an L3 counterfeit parts and you still run 20? I am mind blown right now. If anything, they should penalize NASCAR for... <laughs> I mean, I, I'm mind blown here. Yeah, SHR hasn't been running great the past couple of years. There's no secret about it. But Briscoe's won a race in the last two years. Harvick's won a couple of races. So it's not like they're bottom dwellers. Like, they're, they're still decent. They're not supposed to be running 30th in stage one and finishing 20th. Uh, Briscoe was contending for the win in this thing last year. I am mind blown right now. I don't know how to react to this news. Like I've said before in these penalty videos, don't mess with NASCAR. In the next gen era, they are not messing around. Do not in any way, shape or form mess with NASCAR. They are not messing around anymore. If you mess with a single source part, penalized. Points, playoff points, fines, suspensions. Whatever the rule book says, you're done for. Don't mess with them. This is another level. Literally another L level because you know L1, L2, L3. Like it's literally another level. Oh my, what are you doing? Like, look, okay. The, what's the old saying? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying with when it comes to racing. Like, okay, teams are messing with single source parts. There's no question. A lot of teams have gotten busted, as I said earlier, for messing with single source parts. It's it's no question. It happens. And it's always happened. Like teams are going to bend the rules as much as they can so they can run faster. You just try not to get caught. Like I'm not going to sit here and tell you that every single car on the field outside of Briscoe is picture perfect every week to the rule book. That's not true. Like there are a lot of cars out there. They've got something illegal. They just dodge the post race R&D center or they don't run good enough to get inspected or, you know, they run like sixth, so they don't really have to get inspected, you know? Like, you can dodge it still. Or, you know, if you win, you just do a small inspection and you don't have to do the whole breakdown. But this is another level of, oh my God, I cannot believe counterfeit parts, L3 penalty to run 20th. Wow, just, wow, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. This, History is being made before our eyes. I thought the Chase Elliott the suspension was going to be the biggest penalty of the week. And then this happened. My goodness. Golly. Whew. And they're not appealing either. That There's so much mind-blowing stuff about this. But yeah. Um, wow. Uh, good job, Chase Briscoe and Team Well. I'm going to take a wild guess and say Chase Briscoe didn't actually do anything, but bravo, Stuart Haas Racing, bravo. You have made NASCAR history by um, breaking the rules so bad, but still running. Tw it is mind-blowing. What am I missing here? Someone's going to be in the comments, like, furious at me, like, 
just like, oh, the, you don't know, the, the counterfeit part actually had a counter uh, effect on it, so they didn't run as good. I am genuinely curious. Why did they run that bad when they were running an illegal part to get the worst penalty you could possibly get? How does that happen? If this was like, you know, live fast to 78, if this was like the Spire 77, then it's like, oh, okay, they're already that bad, you know? Uh, 20 is actually like really good for them. But with with Stuart Haas, like, man, Harvick led laps. I mean, I guess he had that stinker of a first stage, but, you know, Harvick this year, he's led laps. He almost won Phoenix. SHR has been up front at times. Yeah, they've had a lot of bad races, but they at times have been contending for wins. But this is like another level. Like, my goodness. I need someone to stat check me to make sure that's the worst penalty in NASCAR history. But uh, thanks for watching. I really don't have any other opinions. I've kind of just expressed all my opinions there. Like, oh my gosh. Um, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this penalty. Chase Briscoe and SHR and the 14 team getting an L3 massive slap in the face nuclear everything to run 20th let me know your thoughts uh thanks for watching subscribe share whatever you want to do and uh i'll see you guys when i see you guys because i still don't know when i'm gonna make a video next it should be next week maybe for the race on sunday tbd